Divisibility tests are very important for maths challenges. We might use them to check for factors of larger numbers or to see if those numbers are prime. They're also an essential part of many harder problem solving questions that have multiple steps. Now divisibility tests can save us a lot of time, especially when working with these larger numbers, because they give us a way of checking whether one number is a multiple of another without having to do a full long division. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to use all of the divisibility tests for 2, 3, 4, 5, 8 and 9. Uh, so let's get started now. The test for divisibility by 2 is an easy one and you probably know it already, even if you don't think of it as a divisibility test. Numbers that are divisible by 2 are just the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 and so on. We can test if a number is divisible by 2 by looking at its last digit. If the last digit is even, that is if it's 0, 2, 4, 6 or 8, then the number is even, and if not, it isn't. This is quite an easy divisibility test, but it does show us what we're looking for in a divisibility test. They're like shortcuts. We can look at a large number like 5,205,356 and immediately know it's even because its last digit is even. Next, 5 also has an easy divisibility test. Because if you think about the 5 times tables, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and so on, you'll notice that multiples of 5 always end in a 5 or a 0. So we just need to look at the last digit. If it's a 0 or 5, the number is a multiple of 5, and if not, then it isn't. So that's the easy ones taken care of. Next we'll look at divisibility by 3, and this is one of the most used results in all of the maths challenges, so pay close attention to this one. A number is divisible by 3 if the digit sum of that number is divisible by 3. Sometimes people call the digit sum the digital root, but we'll just say digit sum here. And the digit sum is just what it sounds like, it's the sum of the digits of the number. A sum just means adding, so if we take the number 4254, then its digit sum is 4 plus 2 plus 5 plus 4, which is 15. The digit sum test then tells us that 4254 is a multiple of 3, because its digit sum 15 is also a multiple of 3. Now we know that 15 is a multiple of 3, but if you wanted to you could even apply the test again to check. The digit sum of 15 is 1 plus 5, or 6. Since 6 is a multiple of 3, then 15 must be 2. Of course it's only worth applying the test again if the digit sum we end up with is a much larger number. For example, let's take a number that has 100 digits. The first 50 digits are all 3s, the next 30 digits are all 4s, and the final 20 digits are all 7s. Is this number a multiple of 3? We can check by working out its digit sum. This would be 50 times 3, plus 30 times 4, plus 20 times 7. That's 410. To check quickly if 410 is a multiple of 3, we add its digits to get 4 plus 1 plus 0, which is 5. This isn't a multiple of 3, so 410 isn't a multiple of 3, and so the original number isn't a multiple of 3 either. Now you might be wondering, why does this test work? And if you are, then I'm impressed, because the best mathematicians are always asking this question, and it is a very important one. But proving results are true is usually harder than using them, and I want to cover all of the tests first, so I'll, I'll put another video below that shows you uh, how to prove this result. If you do want to watch it afterwards, you can have a look. You can always check if a number is divisible by 9 by looking at the sum of its digits. If that's a multiple of 9, then the original number is also a multiple of 9. So for example, take the number 837, the sum of its digits means 8 plus 3 plus 7, which is 18. That's a multiple of 9, so 837 is also a multiple of 9. In fact, it's 93 times 9. It's also a multiple of 3 because 18 is a multiple of 3, but also because any multiple of 9 is always a multiple of 3 as well. Now let's take 2433. The sum of its digits is 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 3, which is 12. This is a multiple of 3, so 2433 is a multiple of 3. But 12 isn't a multiple of 9, so it's not a multiple of 9. Finally, consider 3124. Its digit sum is 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4, which is 10. That's not a multiple of 3 or 9, so 3124 isn't a multiple of 3 or 9. But be careful, this trick only works for 3 and for 9. You can't test divisibility by other numbers in this way. So it's going well. We have divisibility tests for 2, 3, 5 and 9, and they're the ones you'll use the most. But you'll also quite often use the tests for 4 and 8. The divisibility test for 4 says that we just need to look at the last two digits of the number and check if that's divisible by 4. For example, take the number 34,864. The last two digits are 6, 4, and 64 is 4 times 16. So this test tells us that 34,864, and any other number that ends in 64, must be a multiple of 4. To see why that's true, think about the number 100. That's 25 times 4, and so it's a multiple of 4. But this means any multiple of 100 is a multiple of 4 too. 
So 34,800 is a multiple of 4 because it's equal to 348 times 100, which is 348 times 25 times 4. So if we add a multiple of 4 to this number, then we'll still have a multiple of 4. Our example was 34,864. That's 34,800 plus 64. These are both multiples of 4, so 34,864 is a multiple of 4, and that's why the test works. The test for multiples of 8 is very similar to this, although it's not quite as useful because we still need to look at the last three digits of the number. If that three-digit number is a multiple of 8, then so is the original number. Take for example 45,168. We look at the last three digits, 168, and see that this is 21 times 8. We can then conclude that 45,168 and any other number ending 168 will be a multiple of 8. That's because 1,000 is 125 times 8, and so any multiple of 1,000 will also be a multiple of 8. For example, 45,000 is a multiple of 8 because it's 45 times 1,000, which is 45 times 125 times 8. Then when we add on a multiple of 8 like 128 to get 45,128, we're adding two multiples of 8 together, and so we must get another multiple of 8. So to recap, we now have divisibility tests for multiples of 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, and 9. For divisibility by 2, we check if the last digit is a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. For divisibility by 3, we check if the digit sum is divisible by 3. For divisibility by 4, we check if the number formed by the last two digits is a multiple of 4. For divisibility by 5, we check if the last digit is a 0 or a 5. For divisibility by 8, we check if the number formed by the last three digits is a multiple of 8. For divisibility by 9, we check if the digit sum is divisible by 9. And these are by far the most important divisibility tests that will come up in the maths challenges. Whilst there are some tests for divisibility by other numbers, they're not as useful, because most of the time it's just as quick to do a long division as it is to apply the test. Oh, and I almost forgot, if you want to know where the digit sum test for 3 and 9 works, you can watch the video on screen now.